I am a protector. I always protect animals, people and nature. Everyone I come into contact with I care for and help. No one sits hungry and sad in my presence. No one mistreats, bullies and misbehaves towards anyone around me. This great empathy and sympathy that characterizes me as a person is sometimes a burden. Because life is sometimes unpredictable and unfortunate. Every lost person is a failure. Every setback a disappointment. Every broken dream or loss is painful. My separation anxiety becomes so great that a small goodbye becomes an obstacle of monumental proportions. Nevertheless, all my life I have practiced letting things go. Letting it play out and letting things take their course in their natural order. It is so easy for love to turn into pain. Wanting things is a curse. Desire is the breeding ground of disappointment. Nietzsche said that hope is dangerous. Hoping hurts us. The perfected soul takes everything as it comes. They are steadfast in their untouchability. But they are never condescending or scornful of the unfortunate. Rather, they see adversity and deep pain as an inevitable part of the human experience. They support when they can, they help when possible and they let go and let things happen when it's impossible. They witness their own and others' fates with equanimity without being drawn into sadness or anger. In this way, most people are not. We deeply feel how pain can annihilate our ego. We feel ourselves dying again and again during the vicissitudes of life. We are like on a long wave where the outer curve reaches the extremes, joy and sadness. We bounce helplessly between these states. When we achieve balance within ourselves amidst extreme external imbalance and chaos, then we are ready for ascension to the next higher existence. Then we are like a welding flame that burns concentrated and strong. Then we are old and wise and human life fades away in the divine stream of love. Then we have completed the human stage after many human incarnations. When I can love in untouchability. When I can stay in the source of my wisdom and be healed by its wondrous current. Then I am free. Then I am grace. When you get older, there are a lot of things to get sentimental about. When you were little you had no past. But now it is incalculable. You are filled with all the events and emotions of a lifetime. You are more objective but also more self-aware. You created all this. You are the result. You are burning pulsating feeling. Everything unites into one stream. Here, sadness is mixed with joy. Here is the way. Cry your tears, laugh your laughs. And ultimately become nothing of it. Be the higher essence emanating from the confluence. You are the same person as always. Timeless spiritual existence growing in wisdom and love. It's all happened, a million times. You've been here before. The thoughts that made up your reality have become a prison, sometimes a nightmare. The ones you worked so hard to acquire. Is now of no use. Now true faith is needed. Now inner peace and blessing are needed. When we meet fear with love. It disappears. Sorrow will disappear, only wisdom will remain. 
when we dare to walk through the door to the next. And we need all the time we can get. It is no easy job to be human. We live 100 years, with severely limited minds, with little black souls, surrounded by total illogical crap. And we are afraid of death. What a joke. We are in an eternity machine. We are in a ruthlessly efficient generator of consciousness and life. This saga continues to unimaginable heights, to endless eternal immortal energy. It takes a few rounds around the sun before you understand this. Human life is enormously primitive, short and fragile, filled with untold suffering and struggle. A person who has not reached an enlightened state can never understand the meaning of life. Hatred and injustice are the only things they produce. A human is a biological doll made to learn about the eternal, to learn about the greatest love and light. This physical drama is overseen by the being of the electromagnetic sphere. It is a complete illusion that the reality of the human being would be the absolute. Creatures are meant to be completely bewitched by their form and its reality. But if one becomes aware of the true conditions of one's form, one is done with that level. Then you just have to free yourself from its chains. This is what most enlightened teachings are about. All mystics avoid humanity. They conceal everything from people's eternal misunderstandings, accusations and mockery. Because they know what it's worth. They understand what it takes to rise out of this horrible state. By the time you turn 50, you have passed through seven seven-year periods. It means that all karma from old lives has been played out. People you have dealt with, you have met them in the past, in other times, in other settings and constellations. You are done with them then. Those who have chosen to be nothing to you, respect that they mean nothing to you. Leave all of them behind so you don't create new karma through bad connections. If until now you have felt any kind of need to sort something out, it disappears because you are now free from the shackles of the past. Only those who are there in your life are worth anything from you. Karma exists to give us freedom to choose our own destiny. The wise avoid problematic relationships with people to avoid creating bad karma. That is what is called a mystic. It is taking responsibility for the evolution of one's eternal soul as one merges with its divine nature. Through bad actions we bind ourselves to this merry-go-round of physical life. Through unworldliness and love, we free our soul from this necessary suffering. You must never repeat the mistakes you made during the unfolding of your bad karma. Now is the chance to cut the ties to this human existence of suffering and become a free soul. After 50 the hardest part of the journey begins but you have a lifetime of experience to draw upon. If you are finished, then you now possess the wisdom. If you are still in worldly illusion, entangled in feelings and actions then you are unwise and consequently must live here again as a human being with all the endless suffering that entails. As you age, future prospects shrink. You begin to study the past. Your life is a fairy tale, an epic to learn from. Many episodes of this soap opera have been played. Many chapters are written in this book. Much drama and intrigue has unfolded and much emotion and insight has passed. Many thoughts have been thought, 
many words have been spoken. As a young person, you are driven by dreams and realizations. One howls poetically at the moon and loves and hates passionately. You look at all the personas you've created over time and all the work you've accomplished. You also look with trepidation at the evil and failures you have manifested. You also look at your loneliness. Something you perceived as taking responsibility. As duty and necessity. Something you just did without much philosophical thought. That was your usefulness, that was your natural role. Alone you came, alone you fought, and alone you lead this life. Fortunately, human life is filled with relationships and spirits surround everything. As you grow older, the point approaches when you will become one of them. When your understanding and learning are so great that you are ready. When your purpose has been fulfilled and all is finished according to the physical and spiritual laws of human life. When wisdom is fully flowing through your being. Then you must travel on. This is completely understandable then. Now you are not one of the living. Nor among the dead. Now you attain only yourself, now you bear only your own power. For better and for worse, through heaven and hell, between confidence and despair, you now stand and see everything so crystal clear.